Although I didn't know the name yet, I did know a new, more upmarket dragonfly was on its way for some time. It finally arrived, is named Dragonfly Cobalt and was worth waiting for. Although AudioQuest is most known for their audio and video cables, they also made a name for themselves producing very affordable ultra compact MQA rendering USB DACs. My first Dragonfly was the Black One that drew more power than a smartphone could deliver and also did not render MQA files. It was followed up by an improved Black One, the 1.2, that was introduced together with the RED in 2016. Prices were 99 and 199 euros. The blacks were simple DACs but still outperformed the internal DACs of most computers and smartphones. From the black 1.2 onwards, AudioQuest managed to get the power consumption low enough so that they can be powered from a smartphone. You do need a so-called on-the-go cable for Android phones or a lightning to USB cable for iPhones. The Dragonflies are, of course, also perfect for upgrading the sound quality of your laptop or desktop computer, for you can connect not only headphones using a 3.5mm jack to twin RCA cable, you can also connect it to the AUX or CD input of your amplifier. After a while both the black 1.2 and the red had the software updated over a small update program for Windows and Mac. Since then they can render MQA files. More on this later. The new Cobalt has become slightly smaller and more rounded than the earlier models. Not really relevant since they were already small. More important is what has changed inside. I already saw people praise the Cobalt since it uses the ultra modern ESS 9038Q2M DAC chip. This is indeed an excellent chip, but compared to earlier versions the sound quality has not improved that much. My guess is that two other improvements play a bigger role. First the power supply filtering has been improved according to AudioQuest using the same technique they use for the Jitterbug USB cleaner plug. Especially HF noise from Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and cellular noise should be blocked better. And then the microprocessor used in the Cobalt, the microchips PIC32MX274 has 33% higher performance while drawing less power. My guess is that this microprocessor not only does the USB receiver job, but also at least some of the digital filtering. Since the ESS9038 DAC chip can't do MQA rendering, the microprocessor must do that job. And then it makes sense to have it do the reconstruction filtering as well. AudioQuest mentions that they use the slow roll-off filter in the ESS9038, so they might combine the microprocessor filtering with that. After the DAC chip an ESS Sabre 9601 amplifier is used. A big advantage of this amp, also used in the RED, is that it has a high output voltage. Both are specified at 2.1 volts. I measured 2.24 volts at 1 kHz, so driving headphones will not be a problem with perhaps the exception of some exotic models. As you know, my experience with headphones is limited. I am interested in how this DAC behaves when used in a normal stereo, so I used it in my setup 1 and 2. But first a bit on MQA. MQA is a novel approach to coding high resolution music based on the insight that where with audio equipment there is a solid relation between time and frequency and thus between time resolution and frequency resolution, our auditory system works drastically different. If sound quality is of importance, 192 kHz sampling would be close to perfect, but that uses far too many bits per second for many applications like broadcast and portable audio. Therefore they use 
PCM up to 96 kHz and another more efficient coding system above 96 kHz. By wrapping those signals together in a very clever way, this signal ends up having about the same bits per second as a normal 44.1 kHz wave file as used on CDs. This might be one of the reasons why all dragonflies are limited to 96 kHz sampling for handling higher sampling rates also requires more power and they wanted to be able to power the dragonflies directly from the smartphones and tablets. Using MQA encoded files they still can play files up to 384 kHz due to the clever rendering MQA uses. So normal PCM files can only be played up to sampling rates of 96 kHz while MQA files up to 384 kHz can be played. You do need a player software that can do the MQA decoding in the phone or computer, like the Tidal player software and Rune. It's good to know that MQA will not allow for upsampling 44.1 kHz masters. So a 44.1 kHz master will remain 44.1 kHz when MQA encoded. But even then MQA has the advantage that it corrects the timing errors of the reconstruction filter and thus will sound better than when the same DAC chip was used without MQA technology. I've published several videos on MQA and made a playlist for those that want to know more. As you might already have understood, the Dragonfly Cobalt sounds clearly better than the Red. Where the Red was a very good portable DAC that you could use also in a stereo like my Setup 1, the Cobalt is well suited on the low end of my Setup 2, just below the Chord Mojo. The minimum phase slow roll of reconstruction filter they have chosen for was a wise decision. I would not be surprised if there has been some influence from the MQA certifiers for they, like me, prefer this filter approach. It enhances resolution, especially in the mid-range, it cleans up the highs and improves anything time related like stereo image, focusing, sibilance control and the blackness of the background. This is a very fine sounding DAC, not only for portable use. For me, the dragonflies are ideal tools for my job. In the old days you always carried a simple adapter cable to be able to plug in headphones for troubleshooting. In the digital age the dragonflies fulfill this role. If I have to dig into the user interface of a digital player, I always plug in the dragonfly with either an old iPod speaker or an in-ear speaker, only one, I'm claustrophonic so I can hear what's playing. Or when I need to edit in a noisy environment, I plug in a Dragonfly and put on the Nighthawk or DALI IO6 headphones. The latency of the Dragonflies is very low, as where with Bluetooth headphones the quality is lower while there is some lag between picture and sound. And on vacation I rather took the red with me than the mojo for practical reasons. The size and the full control from the iPhone. Now with the Cobalt I will replace the Sentence deck board in, within my setup 3. And take it with me on vacation. Is it the best audio device I have? Sound wise no, but it is the best for the money as far as I know. The color indication for the sampling rate and MQA decoding is not really my thing, but you find that in other decks as well. And I only play music in the highest quality I have, so I don't care. With the Cobalt, the Dragonfly series enters the realm of good stationary decks that can easily be taken on the road. And that all for only 300 euros. I won't bore you again with remarks on fast developing digital audio equipment this time, but I'm tempted, very tempted. So let's end this video before I change my mind. But there will be another video next Friday, as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you'll be informed when new videos are out. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially, it keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.